Good afternoon everyone. In today's video, we're going to revisit all three price channels that we drew together five days ago. Now five days ago, we used the five minute time frame chart, which this is the price channel of. We used the one hour time frame chart and we used the daily time frame chart to draw three different price channels on the S&P 500. Now we drew the five minute channel using November 17 slow, that's this low right here. And this is what price activity looked like when we made this video, again, five days ago. Now since then, this five minute channel has changed pretty dramatically where we've now broken below these lows. So let's revisit all three channels, see what price action is now telling us inside of the S&P 500, and where using the volatility today, we had some interesting opportunities. Now starting off, let's come into a five minute time frame chart first, and I'll expand this to 10 days so we can see the November 17th low. This is what price activity looked like when we were making the video. Since then, we came down to the lower end of this channel. We even tried to hold it as support today. All of this happened today. So around 9 a.m. is where we touched the lower end of the channel, a little fake out in that lunchtime hour before price action then broke below the channel fairly definitively. We closed outside of the channel as well. So it's safe to say our five minute channel now has been broken, which was really formed using one, two, and three higher lows. That then takes us to the idea of our next channel, which is the one hour time frame channel. Now that one hour channel is still intact and it gives us a low, a place where we expect support to hit near that 390 price point. That's this area right here. And really the lower end of that zone would take us all the way down to 370. But I think at that point, the bearish uh, overall longer term trend takes into play. So 390 is really the level. If you were looking to play this uptrend that I would be looking for with a very tight stop. Now, if we zoom inside of this price area here, 390, let's take a look at what this looks like in the grand scheme of our overall daily time frame chart. On the daily time frame, we still have our longer term downtrend intact. 390 would bounce with our market pulse on the daily, which is still very much in a stage of acceleration. So that would essentially be just a pullback and an overall uptrend. And that would allow you to continue targeting the upper end of this longer term downtrending channel really near that 410 mark. So that's the bullish perspective. If you're looking to play the shorter term trend, we're now opening up the zone near 390, which overlaps with the market pulse, trying to play a bounce this overall longer term downtrending channel. If instead we don't see price action have any kind of support here, that zone takes us all the way down to 370 and that makes for a fairly wide zone, which I think makes it more interesting to play this longer term downtrend instead, trying to play some of those bearish day trades. Now, speaking of day trades, let's take a look at what the volatility looked like inside of the S&P today. Given that we broke this channel, you might've expected that, hey, volatility would have picked up. Instead, we had fairly systematic volatility today. We chopped inside of our volatility box zones. We got fairly close with some uh, fairly jagged candles, but that didn't pan out to much here. Instead, the one market that did give us an entry today with the volatility we saw was gold. Inside of gold, we had first a bounce in the 6 to 7 a.m. Pacific hour, where price action fell inside of our cyan lines and we bounced from there too quick for us to do anything about. No trade here. All this told us was, hey, the scalper volatility box models, that's the ones we're using here in gold, we're being respected. We can count on a bounce for buyers to either buy these bottom regions or for sellers to sell the upper regions. That's what the volatility profile currently tells us. Using that information in the 8 to 9 a.m. Pacific hour, that's where the trade opportunity came uh, inside of gold. Price action fell inside of our sign entry lines. That's step number one as part of our fade setup. Step number two, we had our edge signal confirmations. That's our oversold confirmation in this case, telling us we expect price to reverse. Our entry is at the sign entry line, which we did get retests of. Our stop is outside of the volatility box clouds. This today was a bare minimum risk of 1.4 points. Let me show you that as well from the sign line to the outer edge of the clouds, 1.4 points. And that was hit in this large green candle on the upside for that one to one first target. Our second target is at the gray target line on the upper side. That was 1760.5 today. We have a break even stop for that, which was hit. And if you gave it a little bit above uh, break even, this larger red candle in 903 took you out. If you gave it a little bit below or actually at break even, it was the 1009 candle that finally took you out. So in either case, no T2 being hit today. 
So gold was the one place where with the volatility, we had a nice in and out off of the scalper models. So essentially that, a quick scalp. We also know off of this uh, S&P five minute channel, we broke outside of the five minute channel. We now have the one hour channel. And that gives us a price point near that 390 mark, which you might be looking for if you still have this bearish mindset. We're looking for price to really stabilize around 390 though. And a very easy way to do that, in my opinion, would be to do something like use the edge signal along with say a momentum signal to time a reversal in which you're looking to play the overall bounce off of that 390 mark. So hopefully you found today's video useful. I'll leave a link to some videos in the description box below, a quick update on the price channels we drew together, along with an example of where that volatility panned out in a market, not the S&P 500 futures, but still one of the major futures markets setting up a nice long entry. Take care everyone, good luck trading, and I'll see you in the next update.